Morning, everyone. My name's Krista Linnell, and I'm the Head of Marketing for Comtech Translations. Um, welcome to our first episode of Every Company Has a Story. Um, throughout 2023, we're going to be hearing from really great stories from great companies that have cross-cultural boundaries, that have increased the effectiveness of communication throughout the world, that have increased the accessibility to training, but today, I am joined by Dawn Trail, who is Group Director of Corporate Communications from Klockner Pentaplast, fondly known as KP, which I will be referring to throughout. Um, before I hand over to Dawn, a few pieces of housekeeping. Do feel free to use the chat functionality to connect with fellow attendees today and the Q&A functionality to ask any questions, which we will get to at the end. But Dawn, welcome. Thanks. I'm really, really happy to be here today. Thank you. Um, so for, for our audience, in a nutshell, would you be able to give us um, an overview of what it is exactly that KP do and your role at the organization? Yeah, sure. So Klukna Pentaplast is actually um, a longstanding um, packaging company specializing globally in sustainable um, food packaging products, sustainable pharma products, as well as high barrier films for a number of different areas. Um, again, pharma and medical devices are, are two of our bigger categories. Perfect. So I understand that sustainability is at the heart of your culture. Um, and I know our listeners will be keen to understand how you came to that. And what kind of sustainability is it? Human, social? environmental? Yeah, I actually like to say all of the above. Um, you know, KP's vision, the sustainable protection of everyday needs has to do with not only its products, but um, its people, its communities, and, and the sites in which, we, which we work in every day. So um, although we have a long history of innovation in sustainable um, packaging products, also really focusing on um, using recycled materials, um, having recyclability included in, in our materials, um, closing the loop on sustainability for products. Um, we also really look at how we're being energy efficient, how our sites can um, reduce waste and, and become more sustainable every day. And as well, we look at the people aspect of things. We look at safety for our employees, making sure that they're also engaged and happy, as well as um, working in our communities and, and, and giving back to the community where our, where our sites are located. And we have 31 sites around 18 com countries in the world. Wow. Um, and how would you say sustainability manifests itself with your customers? Do they need to be sustainability trailblazers? Do you enable them to be sustainability trailblazers? Yeah, I think everybody needs to be a sustainability <laughs> yeah. trailblazer in today's world. It's um, it's become very it's it's become you know one of the most uh, the biggest fears actually in humankind today is that is that we will not take care of our earth and we won't survive because of that. Um, so sustainability becomes more important actually every single day. And that's also true for our customers. They have their sustainability agendas and strategies. They have their own goals that they're trying to reach. And as a packaging company, we're here to help them try to reach those aims as well. So that what we do, um, co-collaborating with them for, for more sustainable solutions also helps them reach their ESG aims. Yeah. And I know this question is, is quite tricky, but how do you have effective global comms around sustainability? Yeah, I think there are a couple of aspects uh, to that. You know, I think the most important thing about sustainability communications and sustainability reporting is the Transparency Act. Um, part of it. So I think we have to be really clear with our communications 
Um, we have to take a very, very high integrity approach to the communications. And as we're communicating globally, uh, we really just need to ensure that also when we're communicating in other languages, uh, that there's actually no, no misinterpretation, right? So it, it, in sustainability communications, it's about being really true and authentic and also ensuring um, that that you know, there's there's no miss in the in the translation to to foreign languages. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, how do you ensure global reach and impacts on that global stage with your internal comms? Yeah, for internal comms, obviously. Um, I think it's important for everybody to know that we have a high population of non-wired employees or limited wired employees. They're on production lines, they're working in plants, they're not necessarily um, on, um, on a laptop every day uh, working in, in the Microsoft world, right? So, so I think what's important to, to do there is really to look at the way we can communicate with these people. Um, giving them the chances to be online um, when they can and have really that one go-to spot where they can get all of the information that they need, um, as well as having really sort of strong, um, strong capabilities or channels to communicate with them while they're actually on the shop floor. So in the last year, we really put an initiative in place to, to, to strengthen the communi internal communication channels with our employees, um, not only really going into more of the digital blackboard world, if you will, but, but really also looking at um, installing kiosks where um, they could very easily access the intranet and um, you know, we moved recently from um, an intranet presence that was probably something that people would equate with something from out of, you know, 2004, 2005, um, to a new, more um, up-to-date intranet. Actually, it's more of an employee engagement platform uh, where we have the ability to um, really become that one-stop shop. Um, for information going out to employees, but will also um, allow them to have interaction with each other online as well. Um, this is this may not seem like it's new and innovative to a lot of people, but uh, this is one of the one of the gaps we had in 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 reaching a big big portion of our employee base that um, that we really um, took the time to to think about and, 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 and actionize. Um, so that's one thing. But then the other thing is also um, enabling them to get their communications in their own language. That's a real strength for a company to just think about, um, you know, think about foreign language communications to their employees as, as um, really being inclusive. And, and that's, and that's, you know, one of the key things that that we uh, want to ensure that people realize about um, working for KP is that we are truly, you know, looking to be an inclusive company. We truly act as an inclusive company, and and that includes, um, you know, and that includes the communications part of it as well. Yeah, no, that's that's great to hear. Um, what what have you found has been the hardest part of ensuring that? that reach and impacts that you guys have? Yeah, well, um, like a lot of companies, um, the communications function is pretty lean. Um, and so I think we're always having to look at um, how can we install um, communications channels and how can we get great content out to our people with the limited resources that we have. Mm -hmm. um, how can we do more with less? And, and, um, and how can we make our communications rather than just being strictly informative, um, how can we really make our communications two way and engaging for our internal communi communities? Um, 
I know I know that that feels like you know it may be a, a bit rudimentary, um, but when you know you're a global team of of four people, um, you know that's that's um, that's actually a big task. And uh, I think my team does a great job, and I think that we take. Um, we, we take both a pragmatic approach uh, as well as looking into the future and trying to find innovative new ways of doing things, um, but innovative new ways of doing things where we can actually be very hands-on with it ourselves. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes complete sense. Um, so looking into the future, what's the bright future you see yourself participating in? And how how are you planning to communicate that both internally and externally? Yeah, well, I think the bright future for KP is is the fact that um, we have a strong legacy of innovation um, that will take us right on into the future, and that innovation will be um, in really focusing on 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 the needs of our customers, especially in sustainable. Um, products and and you know internally really focusing on uh, becoming a more diverse in, and um, equitable and inclusive in environment. We recently put um, we recently put um, a global initiative in place actually two years ago, and it's really taken traction. Um, we've set up three um, ERGs that are really sort of. Um, sponsored by KP, but actually um, run by employees. Um, one is in the area of women in management uh, or, you know, women's network in general, um, which I think is super important in a traditionally male-oriented business. Yeah. Um, one is in the area of, we call it KP ability. It's actually enabling um, disabled persons, both physically and otherwise, to be able to feel included and 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 know that KP is just a great place to work. Um, K, you know, also helping them with their needs, um, even in understanding their needs. And, and a lot of people actually don't um, try to do. They try to do maybe the right thing, um, but inadvertently do the wrong. Right. So we're spending a lot of time on awareness and education there. And then the third is, is known as KP balance. And that's really all about um, men, mental well-being and, and, um, and wellness. So um, there's a group really looking into, you know, what, um, what do the people of KP need to feel a good work-life balance and to understand that wellness is really sort of also high on our agenda. These things are, you know, outside of just solid, you know, going out there and selling, selling, selling and commercial um, topics. And so um, I think in the future, this is what makes KP bright is, is that it considers really, really the people high on the agenda as well. Yeah. And will you use, you mentioned your internet, internet, is that what's used internally to communicate those initiatives predominantly? Well, actually, you know, we we do multi-channel communication of these types of initiatives. Um, you know, when I think about diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, it's it's a topic that is really important. Also, outside of KP, if if you look at LinkedIn, um, there's there's quite a bit um, of discussion around. Um, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and the needs of, of folks at work. Um, what they need to, you know, be themselves, come to work themselves, and also thrive together in an organization. So we don't even look always just to our internal channels, although the internet is an important part of that. Um, we, we also use our external social media channels to communicate what we're doing and also celebrate the differences um, that, that make people great um, and also celebrate, um, celebrate different um, international days that are, um, were put into place really to drive recognition of, of you know, the different uh, dimensions of diversity. Um, and I think that um, one really important avenue for, for this type of initiative is, is live. It's, 
It's really um, putting people in contact with each other. It's, it's, it's um, offering people open dialogue spaces to talk about things. Mm -hmm. So we use, like you do here today, um, we use the webinar space also to invite people to come and talk, um, to have discussions and panel sessions, and also to enable people in, in you know, sort of a remote working atmosphere um, to still have um, a forum, um, a live forum to be able to, to come together on these things. Yeah. Um, you, me you mentioned um, diversity, equity and inclusion, which we're, we're seeing, you know, huge um, focus on with um, the work that we do. Um, does, does culture play a part as well? With, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, without, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, you know, I think the, the idea is, is that, um, you know, a company culture um, is, is the culture that you live when you come to work every day, and it's around the work atmosphere. Um, more and more, we're seeing the ability for people to come to work um, as they are, who they are, um, with all their individual um, um, ways of being and and thinking and acting and their 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 opinions, um, their their own cultures, their religions, um, that that it's important um, to be able to um, to be able to be all those things at, at work as well. And um, and and our culture is to really um, focus on the fact that we want uh, through our diversity, equity, and inclusion um, initiative not to just talk about it, but to live it. And yeah. um, and so it's a it's a big part of the of of who we are and the way we and the way we approach um, our people, um, the way our people can approach each, each other. Um, obviously, our company culture is also uh, driven by our strategic framework. And within that strategic framework, we've also laid down, you know, sort of the core values and the core behaviors that we have. Um, I think that is, you know, that that is kind of that that common commitment that the people have made to each other in these areas is what has really allowed um, diversity, equity, and inclusion to grow. Um, yeah. Yeah. In our think, company. yeah, I think that's key, isn't it? Giving it the, yeah. the space to be able to grow and having that culture to be able to allow for that space. Um, so what's the most innovative internal communications initiative you've seen at KP? Um, I'm just keen to understand, or, or, or maybe another company undertake, I'm keen to understand from someone not working, in internal comms, what would be sort of, you know, like an initiative that would get you or has got you really excited before? Well, um, I think I just need to speak more broadly than KP alone, because I think um, I have a very clear understanding of what I actually want as an employee, as a, as a, as an internal comms initiative. And the most successful that I've ever seen throughout all of the companies that I've either worked with, with or, or, been given examples about um, really include the organization, the people within that um, within within that campaign. So it's it's really not about going out there and telling the organization any one thing um, and doing it from you know kind of that um, maybe sort of that PR way of the past where where you where you go out and and in, in corporate speak um you know to sort of convey the key campaign message no today is really all about being authentic and being who you are and bringing um bringing your own story to the table just as you're doing actually here today um you know allowing people to tell their stories um you know allowing people to um to, to, to participate. And I think the most successful, successful uh, internal campaigns really include um, people from all walks of life of, of the organization and enabling them to, um, to, to tell their story around, around the, the, the area of the campaign that you're trying to convey. And, 
And I think doing it in, in a very human way, um, just without scripts and, and, yeah. and no, you know, no real, um, you know, definitely guidance to help people feel more comfortable as they're, as they're talking, but, but not really sort of dictating what they have to say. I think those are the ones that really reach the people. It's got the, it's got the human aspect in it. It's very authentic. And, um, and I believe it resonates. People resonate with people in a yeah. more everyday way. Yeah. Yeah, no, completely. And do you see, you know, like, do you see sort of video or the written word or does it depend on what sort of where where that internal communication is going to how it should be packaged up to be? Yeah, done? I mean, obviously, um, we I think we all realize that um, the idea of images, imagery, moving pictures, video um, is much more impactful than than just the written word. And we've all seen um, in our everyday lives how, how much um, uh, big long articles uh, are not being consumed consumed anymore that um, that if you can't do it in a quick and and um, memorable way um, such as a tweet or a post, um, and if you can't use Im imagery, you're you're really not going to reach your your organization so much anymore. That's that's true internally as well as externally, and um, and I think the this is one of the reasons why we've seen also engagement with uh, our newsletter, for example, um, you know, not hold um, as well as much shorter, punchier stories with much more in, in imagery. Um, so definitely, we would prefer to um, look at our internal communications um, campaigns as A, being much more um, visual, um, people telling stories through video, through, um, through, through live sessions, um, but also, um, but also, you know, if, if, you know, if we, if we do back these stories up in, in writing, making sure that it's consumable in bite-sized portions, if you will, um, so that people have the chance in a very quick way to absorb, understand, interact. And I guess that's the last point. Um, I think they, I think that the internal campaigns of today need to be highly interactive. So yeah. there needs to be a two-way um, channel that, that allows people to really engage. Mm -hmm. And is well. that is that the appetite for your intranet to make that a two way? Two -way? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. I think um, I think you know one of the things that I've learned over the last few years is that um, you know top down executive communications um, um, is is not the only channel that drives impact anymore. I mean, what what drives further impact is uh, allowing peer to peer communications, allowing people to, um, you know, where executives come out and they talk about the strategy that's still very much needed and it's still very much wanted and consumed by the people. Yes. People want to see the direction of the company coming from the leadership in the first light, and they want to understand that leaders believe in that. But they also want to be able to go to their managers outside of the leaders to get to get communications and also to feed into communications. They want to have a voice also with their own managers. And then with their peers, they want to be able to go to their peers to say, OK, I need help with this. Do you know where I can get a this or a that? Or I didn't quite understand that part of it. You know, I, I trust you. Would you, mm -hmm. you know, did you get that? And allowing these conversations to really have a, a place on the internet um, ensures, you know, that real true employee engagement and that employees can engage on all levels rather than yeah. just top down. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's fascinating. Um, so quite a grandiose question, but where do you see the future of internal comms going? Have you got any top predictions? Well, yeah, I think I've been leading into it a little bit um, <laughs> along the way, I guess, um, because I really do believe um, that there are three things that are super important, not only now, but will be even become more important in the future. Um, yeah. 
in and I've known this for the last five years or so, it's been become more evident that inter the, the line between internal and external communications is much more blurred. So mm -hmm. you have to really look at using your external channels in the future to also reach your internal organization. Um, of course, you know, not with confidential things, but definitely to reach them in terms of engagement. Um, less is more when it comes to um, messaging. You know, people don't absorb eight messages. They, um, at the most, can absorb and, and interact to interact with three messages, right? Yeah. So, you know, think of messages in terms of three and, and just make sure that they are, that they're more authentic, um, that they are also coming more from the heart. Um, you know, it's not only share of mind anymore, but it's also share of heart to get the share of action from your organization. So um, that's becoming even more important. And and I think that, um, and I, I just think that, um, you know, bringing that human aspect in or, or you know, that, that idea of empathy into business communications is, is, is going to, have much more Im impact in, in how the communications come across to, to employees. So I think in a, nut in a nutshell, keep it short and sweet, keep it authentic um, and human, and, um, and then consider the channels um, that are outside the organization, external, that still can be, can be leveraged to really uh, expand the reach internally as well. Yeah, I think that's such a good point about how the line is now blurred between external and internal yeah. communications. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. Um, is there, are there any questions from our audience today? Please feel free to use the Q&A functionality um, for Dawn. Dawn, I've had one come in direct, direct to me. Um, it looks like it's from someone who manages social media, but in terms of effective, effective communications, how are you seeing the social media landscape changing? I know you've touched on social a little bit. Yeah, social is important, but the landscape is changing. We've seen this steadily over the last year. Um, you know, um, social media posts, um, the content that goes into social media, um, we've seen not only with ourselves, but with a number of other companies that I engage with um, as well on the, on the area of communications, we've seen engagement rates go down. Uh, in some cases, um, pretty drastically. Um, so we recognize that the content that used to work in, in social media channels such as LinkedIn, for example, um, is it's not resonating as much as it used to be. So we really need to look at, um, at what the content needs um, for, for those audiences are of the future and, and work into that. Um, what we're doing to, to really get a deeper view into that is, is uh, we're, we're working with some tools to gain, to gain insights to really um, drive more tailored communications to really be able to understand what our audiences want want to hear from us and and what's important for them. Um, so um, we hope to be able to have a few of these um, sort of listening tools in place very early this year um, because I think to, to remain relevant with your audiences is, is, is critical for, for the brand. It's also critical for, for you know, keeping the brand front and center um, out there in, in the social media world, if you will. So, um, so I think that's, that's where I see social media as, as taking a critical turn. Yeah, no, we're seeing that as well. And we're seeing that kind of, as you mentioned, that two-way um, communication with social that it is an it's a um engagement rather than broadcasting yeah so, yeah um, indeed and um, we've had a question from elaine um audience expect value more and more from the comms they receive how do they how do you build that value into your comms which in turn gets their engagement well i think when i First of all, I think understanding your audiences is the most important thing. Um, you know, what do they value? 
that that that's the first question I would ask, and 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 then we could look at you know how we would deliver that um, in in our communications. Um, what I've seen um, in the last year in our social media, for example, is that um, the the engagement that we get the most and the posts that actually have the most interaction. Um, oftentimes have to do with real human stories or something that we're, um, that we're bringing about in terms of our diversity, equity and inclusion um, mm. initiative, for example. Um, recently, the leader of our KP Balance um, initiative um, put something out there around around the KP Balance um, group and around mental health, which saw a really extremely great reaction and, and, and engagement from the audiences. Um, so what we're seeing is that there's more, there are more emotive um, needs of the audiences in LinkedIn than there used to be. It can't only just be about the commercial side of, of business. Um, on the other side, um, sustainability. Um, be, beyond diversity, equity, and inclusion, sustainability, um, sustainability recognition, um, uh, sustainability updates on where we stand with our with our targets, um, sustainability um, actions that are you know sort of game cha changers that we're taking. These are super super important to our audience as well. They want to know that we are a plastics packaging company who takes our responsibility for plastics um, for plastics in terms of in, in terms of everything the product uh, the people and and our sites very very seriously and and um, and we usually get you know quite high reactions out of, of this type of these are the types of values that that our audiences are appreciating more these days yeah. Yeah, that's great to hear. Um, I've had another one. What's your advice for delivering a consistent internal communication strategy? Yeah, as mentioned before, um, as a be clear, be clear about um, the intent. Be clear about the strategy. Have that strategy very clear on paper. Um, ensure that leaders understand their role in internal internal communications and that they become um, they become advocates of the strategy um, and that they become also the voice of the strategy the internal communications um, that our leader led from the beginning um, um, ensure that it's just not the PR department that's going out there with yeah. the message right yeah. um, and then on the other side of that, I really believe that um, that the employee's role in in having a voice in it back or having a voice in it as a, as a part owner, um, the accountability of, of the organization, um, the engagement from the employee is is really super important. Yeah. Um, and then just one more for me. Um, what can companies do to boost engagement and improve communication with frontline employees? Um, well, I think uh, consider the fact that frontline employees in, a, in the most cases are not online all day. Yes, that's what I was thinking, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the most important thing. And there should be just as much high touch communications available for them live as, is available for somebody sitting at a desk who can get them online all day, right? So take the time to cascade the messages going out um, to the organization. Take the time to train leaders um, to, to deliver the messages. Also important in delivery of messages to frontline workers is, is that human touch, you know? Um, just going out there with facts isn't isn't going to reach the organization um, so well. It's not going to hit them so well. Um, but if you have leaders that go out there 
and who can put a little bit of the heart in there too and hit that sweet spot between factual and emotional, giving examples from their own lives, for example, storytelling, um, this, this really makes a huge difference with, with frontline workers. Understanding their role in the world, that how hard they actually work. Um, a lot of them are on shifts, for example, yeah. you know, this is, it's, it's not as, it, you know, it's, 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 a lot of them have not easy roles um, within their organizations. And, um, and just taking that little bit of extra care is a, really important. And then I think uh, when you give the message, you know, just understand that in a lot of cases in the first, the first time somebody hears, hears it, um, it, it doesn't get consumed and digested and, and, and sink in. Um, and that goes for everybody, not just frontline. Um, so, you know, definitely deliver the message, but repeat, repeat, repeat. I think that's the age old adage. Um, I always like to say seven times and seven different ways. <laughs> and oh, right. yeah, wow. <laughs> that's a good mantra. <laughs> I think that's really good advice, actually, to train the managers and cascade the, the message. And I think that's true. I'm thinking for someone who works by the Internet, you know, with the Internet, by a PC. But I think that's true for those who are more, you know, like Internet based as well. I think that human touch is yeah. is is really key um dawn before we wrap up any other questions from anyone and dawn anything to add from you if i've missed anything that you think um no i think um i i think we've covered pretty much everything um i think um what's important also really to to mention is is that um going you know going in the future um allowing people um of non-English um, countries to be able to receive communications in their own languages um, that really plays into um, the role of diversity, equity, and inclusion. It, it's, it's definitely being more inclusive. And I think um, that's an important aspect to consider. I know a lot of companies have the ability to do it. A lot of companies have to find the way to do it. Um, because it also in, in, entails, obviously, um, working with good, um, you know, good good group of experts to to get that done, and it also, um, you know, it also has a cost factor to it, but it's well worth it because I think um, it it really just in the first line it shows respect to the people of 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 your organizations who are. Who are out there working every day um, in, in in all of the countries around the world? Yeah, no, that. Thank you, thank you. It's it's what we believe as well. Um, well, thank you, Dawn, um, for joining us today in our first "Every Company Has a Story" um, webinar. Um, without further ado, I will end the first episode. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Bye, everyone.